and uh, it has to be said that this young man has thoroughly entertained the crowds that have been here this week when he's played. I'm sure that this audience desperately wanted to see Jimmy White come back and produce some of his brilliance, but they do appreciate good snooker at the Crucible now. They've seen a lot of it over the years. They understand the game. They understand the nuances, and they've seen everything from Stephen. He really has played like a world champion, and uh, it has been a delight to watch Eddie, hasn't it? Yes, uh, I picked Stephen to win the championship again, to retain it, and uh, I know that he hasn't played through the year uh, as solidly as he perhaps has in the past, but he Brandy certainly came right to his best Give form and playing marvellous snooker. So, Jimmy White with no way back now. To be fair, Jimmy White hasn't played at his best throughout this championship. Probably only showed his brilliance once in the semi-final, a couple of sessions against James Watanar. But uh, everyone was hoping he was saving it for the final, but he may have been, but Stephen Henry saved a bit more. Back on for both corner pockets. Seven. Stephen has another excellent opportunity now of opening up an early lead. Fourteen. Fifteen. Twenty-two. Four reds nicely in the open before he even considers taking the cue ball into the cluster. So he could go all the way here. Thirty-eight. Thirty-nine. And really just looking at the statistics of this match, Stephen Hendry has already had 21 breaks over 30, and we're only in frame 23. And Jimmy has had 11 breaks over 30, so... perhaps the quality of Jimmy's play has been slightly clouded by how well Stevens played. Three century breaks as well. 46. 47. Just 
taking the black to get the cue ball into the cluster of reds. Good pot on the black, but I don't think he's gained 54. position to pot a red. Cue ball stuck to the reds. <coughs> And it still hasn't changed for Jimmy White. Was a di very difficult pot, but with average luck, the red would have wobbled away from the jaws of the pocket. One. So with a 60-point lead, you would fully expect Stephen Six. Hendry to finish off frame and match from here. He started off this match, first visit to the table, with a 1-3-6 clearance. And we Seven. all marvelled at it. But I don't think anybody really thought that we were going to see the kind of play from this young Scott. 14. In chasing that uh, wonderful trophy we saw a moment or two ago, it was... 15. an angle to split the reds to. Oh, doesn't have to. That shot indicates there is a red on to the right corner. 21. Certainly the other two will be on after this. 22. Certainly, we've seen some wonderful 29. snooker over the years in the Crucible. I don't 30. think we've ever seen anything better than this. And to beat an opponent of Jimmy White's stature, 18 frames to five, is really nearly beyond belief. I don't think anyone in snooker could have imagined 36. a scoreline like that. 37. One has to feel a little sorry for Jimmy White. He really hasn't been able to do a deal about this. 45. <clears throat> 48. 48. I think the audience are really uh, a little dumbfounded. Because they've been shocked by this. And delighted, of course, by this wonderful snooker from Stephen. 58. 62. This is well done, Stephen, and bad luck, Jimmy. 69.
So Stephen Hendry finishes off as he started. A really magnificent finish. We couldn't have a better champion. The 1993 Embassy World Champion, Stephen Hendry wins 18 frames to five. It's the sales and marketing director of Imperial Tobacco Limited, Mr. Peter Middleton, accompanied by the chairman of the WPBSA, Mr. John Spencer, and joined by Peter Dyke of World Promotions, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. A big smile there. And it's wages and time. We come first of all to the runner-up. It's a cheque for £105,000. Our congratulations and commiserations to go to Jimmy White. His fifth final, and yet again, it's the second prize. This time it's £105,000. And ladies and gentlemen, a cheque for £175,000, the trophy and the title of the 1993 Embassy World Champion goes to Stephen Hendry. You can't deny him that famous trophy or the big cheque. Trophy, certainly, I think, for him more important. A fortune awaiting him now. But what a champion and what a way he's played with the belt. The outstanding player by a long, long way. And they've all enjoyed it, and we hope you have. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a great afternoon for a young man who's defended his title, but I'm sure that you want to show your appreciation to the runner-up, it's his five times here in the final, and that's a great achievement by anybody. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Jimmy White. Jimmy, thank you, mate. Jimmy White, ladies and gentlemen. Well, the scenes here on this bank holiday Monday in this famous crucible, and uh, a few scenes of emotion, I think, John Virgo as well, because uh, mm. Jimmy tried, but what a job he had. He just couldn't do that, could he? Well, I think there's only one word to describe Stephen on that performance. Just awesome. I feel sorry for Jimmy. I've known Jimmy since he was 14, you know. He's given his life to the game and thrilled millions of people, and it's just sad. But I still believe he'll do it. Mm. I still believe he'll do it. But what about this champion? My goodness. Well, it's just frightening, really. You know, we were talking the other day about there's no secrets to the game anymore. You know, it's popular on television, you know. And these lads were watching Steve Davis when he had, you know, that great run. They copied the style, saw how he got his positional place, just read everything into the game. And